All right, welcome to Introduction to Radio Interferometry, Lecture 2. Uh, in this lecture, we're going to recap a little bit of what was in Lecture 1 about uh, how a pair of antennas has a response to the sky, and we're going to take it on through there to discuss the basics of how an image is reconstructed uh, from the measurements of an interferometer. So just to remind you of... Uh, what we talked about last time, uh, we talked about how if we had a source in the sky with plane waves coming down uh, onto two antennas, and the separation between those two antennas is a vector which we often call the baseline, and we call that baseline B. And if we also define the direction towards the source, to be s hat, hat meaning it's a unit vector, and then the projection of the baseline along the source direction, which I'll draw up here, is b dotted with s, and if we want to measure that in the amount of time that it takes to, takes to traverse that distance, we divide by the speed c, and that is the delay, tau, between these two antennas for as perceived by this source over here. Now equivalently, we could imagine that if we were only looking at one particular frequency, we could measure the number of wavelengths uh, between these two antennas. And in that case, we take the projection of the baseline vector in that direction, b dot s, and instead of dividing by the speed, we divide by the number of wavelengths, lambda. And the reason that we'd like to do that is because this measures the number of wavelengths between the two antennas. So uh, rather than just account for the, the amount of time between uh, when the signal arrives at the first antenna and the second antenna, uh, we can measure the number of wavelengths, and that will tell us the phase between these two antennas. So if what we have here is the number of wavelengths uh, from antenna A to antenna B, then we can describe the phase between those two antennas, phi, as e to the 2 pi i b dotted into the source direction divided by the wavelength. Um, we have a minus sign up here, uh, which is just a sign convention on which antenna gets his, hit uh, first. We should also know that this phase is also equivalent to saying uh, e to the 2 pi i, the delay, the geometric delay between these two antennas, times the frequency that you're observing at. These are uh, just completely equivalent ex expressions. Now for this phase, we can actually calculate the visibility that we'd measure from this source, from a single source on the sky. Uh, so this visibility, which is a function of antenna index now, i and j, at a frequency, is the source spectrum times the phase that it comes in at. So that is, the visibility that we measure for a single source is the spectrum of that source with a frequency or wavelength dependent phase term that reflects the changing number of wavelengths between these two antennas as a function of frequency. So a baseline has a fixed geometric length, and it's the fact that uh, oh, the wavelength has a frequency dependence that gives us a frequency dependence in the phase term that we measure. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take the, uh, the phase term here and try to extrapolate to figure out what the response pattern of these two antennas on the sky looks like because we can choose a different s, a different direction towards the source, and that will change this phase term. So we're going to just break out uh, the, the three components of the baseline and the uh, direction and see if that provides us any intuition with what's going on here. So I'm going to start with a couple definitions here. Uh, 
just to help us examine what the response pattern of two antennas on the sky is. First we're going to say that the baseline divided by wavelength, so this is just the baseline measured in units of wavelength, uh, it's going to have three components and I'm going to call them U, V, and W. And U I'm just going to define to be in the east-west direction. V I will define to be in the north-south direction. And W will be in the up-down direction. I'm also going to break apart the source direction, S, into three components. L, M, and because I know this is a unit vector of length 1, I'll call this last term 1 minus L squared minus M squared, square root of that whole thing. And just as U was in the east-west direction, L is going to have to be in the east-west direction. Uh, this, by the way, meaning that east is in the positive direction, west is in the uh, negative direction. V pairs with M, so if V is in the north-south direction, M is in the north-south direction. And if W is in the up-down direction, this last component is in the up-down direction for the direction of our source on the sky. Now the dot product of these vectors, which are in the phase term of our visibility, uh, comes out to be UL plus VM plus W times the square root of 1 minus L squared minus M squared. So if I wanted to come up with an alternate formulation of my visibility equation here that's valid over the entire sky, I would say that for each point on the sky, uh, we have a phase term that's defined by the coordinate on the sky, L, M, and the square root of uh, 1 minus L squared minus M squared, and a function of the baseline, U, V, and W. Um, and this applies to any position on the sky and our visibility is going to sum over our whole primary beam of our two antennas. Actually it's going to be the product of the primary beams of each antenna in our baseline and at each point on the sky we're adding in whatever flux there is on the sky uh, with the appropriate phase term. So to write that out, to write that out, uh, I've changed my notation a little bit here, where now I have frequency as a subscript to reflect that this visibility is still frequency dependent. But instead of talking about a specific pair of antennas, I and J, I'm now talking about uh, the visibility as a function of the coordinates uh, of the baseline, U, V, and W. With a response in any direction that's from the primary beam. So We'll write that as the product of the two primary beams of the antennas, A. Uh, it's a function of L and M on the sky. It integrates over the source flux density on the sky. Which we'll write I sub nu. It's a function of L and M. And then we have the phase term of each position on the sky. It's a function of L and M. So that's the phase term. And then we integrate over the entire sky, dL, dM. And that's an expression for the response of uh, an interferometer as a function of the baseline length UVW. Uh, and its response over the entire sky, including any primary beam effects, whatever the sky looks like, and the phase term that, depend, that is different for every frequency uh, and every position on the sky. And you'll recall that the frequency dependence in here comes from the fact that U, V, and W are measured in wavelengths. So for a fixed geometric baseline length, U, V, and W are completely frequency dependent. And the equation that we've written here 
on top. It's just an extrapolation of the equation that we wrote right down here uh, for a single source, where we have the source uh, spectrum as a function of frequency and the phase term that it comes in at. We've just integrated that over the entire sky, and we've substituted in some coordinates that allow us to parameterize direction on the sky and baseline length together. So I'm going to make one more approximation here uh, that will give us a little better intuitive understanding of what's going on. So I'm going to put a little bracket around what's called the W term here. Um, let's consider this term here separately. I'm just going to break it out really quickly. So we have <clears throat> ALM, a time which is your primary beam uh, on the sky. You have your source spectrum as a function of position on the sky and frequency. Uh, and you have this phase term. And then I'm going to break out the other term. I'm going to write it in red here. Uh, so uh, I've broken out the W term here, which I had in red brackets, into a, a bloody red here. Uh, e to the minus 2 pi i, the W term uh, of our baseline, which is the up-down direction, times this square root. Uh, and then that whole thing is still integrated over the sky, dl and dm. Now, if we didn't have this red term here, if we just got rid of that, and I'll make an argument in a minute for why we might be able to just swipe that out, then what we have here is... Uh, um, we've integrated over these Fourier pairs, L and U and M and V, that in fact, uh, this is exactly a Fourier transform, e to the minus 2 pi i, UL plus VM, integrated over L and M, transforms L and M coordinates into their Fourier complements, U and V. So if we could ignore this W term, we could argue that what all that we've done here is we've taken the true sky is a function of L and M. We've enveloped it with the primary beam of our antennas. And so this pair right here you could consider to be the, the perceived sky. It's the sky seen through the response of your primary beam of your antenna. You have the perceived sky and then you have the Fourier transform of that uh, taking your L and M coordinates on the sky into U and V. And this is all if we can ignore what's called the W term here. So I'll say more about this W term in a minute. But for now, let's just take the case that we have two antennas that are exactly on a flat plane so that W really is zero for the baseline between them looking straight up. So I'm going to put a dot up here, not to say that there's a some star that's straight up, but this is now, instead of being the location of our source, this is what we call the phase center. This is the, uh, the point on the sky that we've chosen to choose our U, V, and Ws with respect to. So I'll just write phase center up there. Um, and now the baseline between these two antennas uh, we could say if we choose this direction to be the U direction, then V is into the page, and there's no V component to our uh, baseline either. And there's no W. W is, is up this direction. There's no W term in this baseline either with respect to this phase center. Now if we forget for a second about the sky itself, or the perceived sky, and just draw the celestial sphere arcing over our baseline, we can ask what does this phase term look like as a function of direction on the sky? So that is, this phase term represents something inherent to our baseline, while the perceived sky, other than the fact that the primary beam uh, depends on your antenna design. This perceived sky is something that is independent of our baseline. Uh, so we can pick a baseline and ask what does the response of our baseline look like on the sky? What is this e to the minus 2 pi i 
UL plus VM term look like? 